A lot of people have been asking about how I made some vocals for a track I have where it sounds kind of quirky and dark. In today's video, I'm going to break down and teach you guys how to create your own vocals for your own tech house tracks. Chord to vocal. For this section, if you don't have the liberty of having a microphone, do not fret. We're not recording vocals like Adele unless you're a soulful singer and you can hit those notes. OTT everything that you can. You see, I suck at singing. However, there's a lot of technological things you can do if you do want to sing. But if you're going to be singing full out and the vocal is going to have those elements, I recommend getting a microphone. If you're not, you can get away with using an iPhone. Make you feel right. Take my hand. Believe in me. It's your destiny. Take a hit. Let it sit. You need me. That's the philosophy. Clean up the vocal. Okay, so once you have your vocal laid out, it should sound something like this. Come with me. Take my hand. Believe in me. Okay, so I'm using the vocals from the track for this example, but as you can tell, number one, it sounds like nothing you would use if you heard it on Splice, correct? It's like, whoa. It's a sick vocal, sick vocal lines, but it's not on splice. Um, so we do need to clean it up. There's a lot of things to do first. The first thing that we want to do is we want to warp it because God knows that I'm not the best singer uh, and hope, not hopefully, but probably you won't be either, right? You're not going to be hitting on the note and that is totally fine. We're at a day and age where we can make like a dog in the street sound amazing. So pretty much the idea is that I'm going to be essentially syncing this like a DJ However, you don't want to get too carried away, of course. You want to make sure that there's still a bit of humanization into it. So let's say I want to get this on beat, right? The idea would be to do this. But you know what? I'll let it start a little ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. And then this kit can go maybe there. And then from there, you just do it for all of them. Okay. Now, the idea of warping, again, you your ears definitely. But you want to see the starting points in the perfect world, which, again, if, if the song sounds too perfect, it might not tickle the ears of the listener. Um, in the perfect world, we can land everything on beat, and there's nothing wrong with that. I could do Take my hand. Believe in me. It's your destiny. Take a hit. Let it sit. You need me. It's your destiny. The last thing we need to do is a gate. Now, depending on the environment that you're recording, hopefully you have the brains to realize that you know, there's going to be some background noise, especially when we start to compress the vocal. This is why it's very crucial that you have a good environment when you're recording vocals. And a lot of people do them in the closet or in a shed. The moment that you start to compress, you're going to hear your neighbors having sex. You're going to hear your other neighbors fucking fighting. And you might hear your son just over there in the next room. Which <laughs> so, again, it's better to not hear that stuff and put a gator. You can also intend... And let's say you're, you're the type of dude that wants to do things manually. Uh, we can also go into our envelope mode here, into our clips, and just clean out the parts where my vocal is really not doing anything. AKA, I could go here and say, okay, there's no noise here, and then it comes in. However, that's why gates were invented to an extent. I want to do that, so I'll use that. Come with me. Take my hand. Well, pretty much what you're trying to do is put the threshold down, and anytime the threshold is exceeded, instead of clamping down like a compressor, what we're going to do is allow the sound out, and then from there, you use your attack and release settings to control the way that it does it. Uh, for me, a 3.50 attack was good. Anything lower than that, you're going to hear a click. Anything changes really fast, you know, you get a click. From there, the release controls how long it takes to go back up. Come with me. Long release. Take my hand. Believe in me. It's your desk. You see, sorry, when it comes down, so as you can hear, I, I don't want my breaths to be heard too much, so I'm going to lower that. Come with me. Take my hand. Believe in me. It's your destiny. So when people were asking about this vocal, the first thing is, how do you get it to sound like deep and dark and fat like that? So this is the part, the sound, the same part of the vocal. You can take things various different ways here, by the way. But one of the things that I decided to implement here was auto-tune. Already set up pretty properly, right? And as you can see, um, I haven't deleted the settings from the vocal, but I'll explain what I'm doing. Pretty much, I'm turning auto-tune into format mode. Okay, so we click there and then just lowering the transposition by seven and then with throat, I control the formants. Uh, and then we get this. Come with me. Take my hand. Believe in me. It's your destiny. Take a hit. Let it sit. Now, autotune is pretty expensive, but I can tell you this much. It's not needed to do this effect. The other way that you can do this is by going into the vocal, going into complex pro mode, lowering down your formants to negative seven like I did in autotune. Come with me. 
playing around with the formants. Take my hand. Believe in me. It's your destiny. And it's exactly the same, okay? The reason I use autotune is because it keeps the vocals in key. And finally, if you want a cheap alternative, which, you know, to get your vocals sounding like a bit like Dom Dollar, you can also use a little Alter Boy from Sound Toys. This is probably the Dom Dollar one because this is so hard to do anywhere else where you would lower the vocal. Come with me. Take my hand. Believe in me. It's your destiny. Fattening your vocals up. Okay, so this is the part of the video where we're pretty much processing vocals. Now, to keep things simple, when you're processing vocals, majority of the time, all you're going to be doing is EQ, compression, reverb, delay. That's, that already sounds complicated, but if you understand those concepts and you don't go too crazy, you should get something that sounds pretty decent, okay? So, the number one first thing I'll use is I do use the West End Vocal Rack, which he gave away for free. He has a video on it on his YouTube channel, and I'm sure if you Google it, it will pop up. Uh, the reason that I use it is just because a lot of this stuff is stuff I already do, and it creates a pretty good amount of width. Now, let me explain down some couple things that are very important about the rack um, so that you can get an idea. Number one, there's a lot of comp one and two here that you can see. All this is doing is providing parallel compression to the vocal, in essence, uh, giving us a very compressed vocal effect without the downside of compression, which is destroying your dynamics. So the first thing I do is put those. Now, the, what you're going to notice is the vocal is probably going to have a little bit more high end, and it's obviously going to be louder. Come with me. Take my hand. Believe in me. It's your destiny. Take a hit. From there, we're met with a flanger and a slap delay. Now, the idea of the slap and the flanger is you can see these guys are panning 13L and 13R. In order to get width with a vocal like this, you really have to make it sound different or change the timing of it from the left and the right to get any sort of width. If it's exactly the same, even with distortion, it will collapse back down the center and you get this weird kind of width. So, this is what these two are doing here. Come with me. Take my hand. Believe in me. It's your destiny. Notice how there's some parts of it that are kind of wide, some frequencies. That's the point of it. And then from there, you do have reverb, which uh, you can choose to use or not. Come with me. Take my hand. Believe in me. It's your destiny. Essentially, all these things are our return tracks. And when it comes to vocals, I'm a huge believer in utilizing return tracks as we want to keep our original source signal, a.k.a. our vocal to have essentially have a dry version of it so we don't swamp it come with me come with me too much with the sauce okay so from there um i do have mag eq4 and this is probably one of my favorite eqs of all time for vocals for adding air uh it's definitely pricey and i did get in on, on sale for 50 bucks from plugin alliance i don't know if they have it in a package now but this is probably the best thing to add air come with me to the vocals come with me Come with me. Literally, most of the time when I use it, I'll just be using the air band feature here, which again, set it to five or 10, and then you can crank it up. Come with me. It just sounds so good, man. I don't know what it is about it, but Come with me. the way that it brings in high frequencies does it in a way where it doesn't sound obnoxious or digitally and it just sounds very pleasing with any vocal now probably one of the best plugins out there that's going to be putting in work it's going to be your best friend it's going to be sooth 2 it pretty much clamps down on resonances creating this sort of clean effect so if you have harsh vocals or anything you, the way you use it pretty much is you set up where you want this to work more the higher it is the more harder it will hit come with me take my hand believe in me it's your destiny i don't think this plugin needs any introduction and i'll be honest with you guys i usually just use it in the factory default and let's say i have too much low end in the voice i'll go over here or too much going on more on the high end very simple plugin to use to an extent you can also over complicate it so keep it simple use it when it sounds good you're there and it also has a lot of great presets okay from there we're going to be going into more processing for the vocal now i'm not going to lie to you guys i'm not a processing expert and the idea of putting the vo uh the cla vocals on this was just i needed to sound fatter so the idea is again we're adding a bit of low frequencies a bit of top wall just means heavy compression and then from there lowering down the width of the effects Take my hand. Destiny. 
Okay, so again, this is adding a little bit more of the it factor on the vocal, and then from there, we're going to be going into another compressor. I, I don't know what I was thinking with this vocal, but definitely wanted every little word to be heard. If I have to explain compression to you when it comes to vocals, as you guys saw when we heard it without any of this stuff, pretty much my vocals always sounded very quiet like and loud. So it was like, come with me, take my hand, believe in me, it's your destiny. Uh, so the idea of a vocal is to control the dynamic range aka the differences in volumes of the stuff i'm saying and clamp down on it okay so this guy is doing the same exact thing this is probably one of my favorite compressors for vocals as well again i'm not world renowned in any way or form but i think it sounds pretty good you need me it's your destiny. Okay, now I will be fair and say that a lot of these analog emulation plugins, uh, the one thing and the reason I believe I put this one is for the color that it provides. Um, there used to be this debate I would get into with people on like, oh, you know, compression, I would say it's always volume automation. That's the way I've always seen it and that's the way it makes sense to me. However, a lot of people always try to debate that um, and the debate was, oh, they saturate and they add color, but then I'm like, yeah, but that's like artifacts, right? That's not meant to happen. It happens uh, as a byproduct of you pushing it hard or because the unit wasn't perfect. Now, this is the last section of this video, but I do want to talk about it because making my own vocals for tracks, which I've done it for a couple already, um, definitely teaches you how to essentially keep things interesting in a song. Um, with this, again, having the vocal say this constantly would get boring, so I would have to come up with new phrases, but I also want to create moments in the track where the vocal essentially sounds different, harmonizes, does really cool stuff. Now, I talked about this in my automations video, but one of the cool things about this record, I feel like, is the idea that I had for the buildup. Now, this might sound choppy, but I think trying stuff out like this makes you sound a little unique to an extent and experimental, which means shit. Uh, but the idea is at the buildup of the song. Take a hit. Let it sit. You need me. There's this really cool quote sort of effect that you can see goes with the vocals. It's created by the vocal. Um, and the idea of that is just pretty much that we're going to have a return track. And this is why messing up your vocal is we have a portal uh, doing whatever portal does, Robocaller, which is just going to be, I believe, adding these sort of delays. Take a hit. Let it sit. You need me. So the cool thing about the return track is it's totally separate from the vocal. We still have the dry vocal with all the effects we did, but now we're just sending it to another. It's going to the master or to the group and also to the return. So this is a new channel where I could use my vocal to create really cool moments and different things. I can also resample this and use for later on in the song if I wanted to. From there, I can EQ whatever's coming in. Take a hit. Let it sit. You need me. As you can see, and that helps create, again, more material and create texture. You can use this technique for a lot of cool stuff. You can make atmosphere with the vocal and stuff. But from there, using that to the advantage, using shifter to really pitch Take that Let it delay. You need me. And then that <laughs> this down, and then boom, boom, bass comes in, right? And then from there, there's an echo just to create more. Okay, cool. So again, using return tracks for the vocal, can, you can use it to help it keep it interesting. The other thing as well you can do is you can harmonize the vocal if you wish to do so. The way you would do that is similar to the West End rack, but now you're going to call your rack, your producer name rack, right? Paid plugins. I didn't want to show paid plugins. But assuming you have your dry signal, then you can come in with another one for certain spots where you're like, I want this to sound bigger. I want to harmonize the vocal. Then you can create di various different parts for the vocal. Like I'm going to put this in a new chain where I'm going to pitch this up. Probably put it behind the western Take vocal rack. Let it sit. You need me. That's the philosophy. And you can see you can do a lot of really cool stuff like that. So I could probably have it like. Come with me. Take my hand. Believe in me. It's your destiny. Take a hit. Let it 
And you can do a lot of really cool stuff with the automations and whatnot, but that's going to be how to create focus for your tech house tracks. If you enjoyed this video, learned anything cool, and you want to support the channel, guys, make sure to head over to evilsounds.com where you can find all of my sound design work. If it's I know it's tough times, so if you want to support it in any other way, I do have a new song, uh, some new song out called Can I Ask You. It's out on Spotify. It's out on Beatport. If you want to check it out on Spotify, give me a listen. Hit like on it. It would really help a lot, and I appreciate that a lot. Other than that, guys, enough with the begging. If, if you enjoyed the video, also hit like and leave a comment. I'm done begging, guys. I promise. You guys have a great rest of your day, and hopefully now you get a little bit of confidence saying if he can do it, I can make my own vocals. <laughs>